Thank you, Richard, for that beautiful meditative intro. Welcome, everybody, to Unity in Ashland. I'm Norma Burton, minister, and we're so pleased today to have uh, Rim Pache, and many of you are his friends and coming here to visit him, so we're so glad to be able to host Rim Pache here today. We're so glad you're here, Rim Thank you all. So we'll be weaving this morning back and forth between he and I and music interspersed and meditation. So very glad to have you with us. And we always start with a few announcements to get those out of the way. Um, first of all, we'd just like to welcome you uh, a little bit more specifically by having you just raise your hand if you're here at Unity for the first time. Great. Glad to see you. After the service, we gather back there and we have refreshments and Rinpoche will be back by the table back there with all of the wonderful things that he's brought from Bhutan that you might like to buy and Becca will be talking about that in just a moment here. Um, so please stay afterwards and have some deeper time of conversation and communion with us. Um, another announcement is that uh, this past year we thought about uh, working with the Rinpoche and him hosting us going on a trip to Bhutan. So it was a little bit too short timing before we were trying to do it last May, but now we're going to set it for next May. And the Rinpoche and I have been talking about it again, and so we'd like to have you start thinking about it and spreading the word and then signing up and getting ready for the trip earlier so that we can get the visas in place and all that needs to happen so that we can actually go on the wonderful trip with the Rinpoche guiding us around the sacred sites in Bhutan next May. So you can talk to us about that afterwards too and sign up for that if you're interested. Uh, there's also a sign up sheet uh, if you're interested in just being on the mailing list for the Rinpoche. And there's also, when you came in the door, there's a sign up sheet if you'd like to be on the Unity email list that lets you know what's happening here every week. So make sure to put your name and email there. Okay, let's see. We also have, um, always have at the end a time when if you came here with a burden on your heart, you can uh, be with the prayer chaplains. But today we have the Rinpoche too, so we'll have our prayer chaplains and the Rinpoche available to bless you, talk to you, pray with you right after the service too. So would, would our prayer uh, chaplains like to raise their hands so we can see who's here today? Okay, thank you. Uh, well, let's begin. And today is a, oh, you have another announcement. That's right, Heather. Yes. So, right over here, Donna Benjamin and Al Chase. This is their last day just for the summer, but I really just wanted to, um, to say that they won't be with us for a couple months. And Donna B. is so wonderful to work with. She holds so many organizational and musical aspects for Unity here, and she's so great to work with. She does the schedule. I've done it before. I know it's not always easy for the musician. And she's always so gracious and willing to jump in at the last moment and um, lend her talents in many ways. So we will miss them until they return. Let's awesome. give Donna and Alice. on your journey with your father, who I know is getting elder and you're going to be with him, so it may be a wonderful time together. Okay, so uh, now let's dive into our theme of our service this week. It's a prelude to the 4th of July on Tuesday. So our theme today is the door to freedom. And our first song is we wanted to have something that everybody could sing along with and that is uh, heart-touching. So take this song on as your own prayer for our beloved America. The beauty of our country. It's good to remember that, right? Why don't we stand as we sing it? You have a sheet of paper. So let's sing this with lots of power and beauty and reverence.
Now before you sit down, put your hands on your own heart as some of you are already doing because that chant really opens up our hearts, doesn't it? Helps us to feel the sacred space within. So as you feel the beat of your own heart, honor the presence of the divine right here in the, in the now moment, in this present moment. Our aware self is awakened and we are with the truth of who we are and the truth of who one another is. And so in this sacred realization, now bring your hands into a you know, bowing position and just bow to a few people here saying namaste. I'm so glad you're here. Just turn around and look at each other. Thank you, everybody. Now we'll enter into our adult sacred space with Heather leading us in a beautiful song it's along the lines of our theme today, The Door to Freedom. about the door to freedom. Is the door to your heart the door to freedom? What is freedom? Is it living as we choose? Our spirits unchained and unhindered by expectations or obligations? <clears throat> is freedom that inner fire inside of you that releases your long entombed soul? Is it a fire that stirs and wakes those living in unhappy resignation? Bob Dylan said, how many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? Remember that song? Well, our country declared itself the land of the free and the home of the brave a long time ago. After all these years, how free are we? This morning, I want to take a few minutes to ponder together 
what exactly is freedom? Well, at its very root, I think being free means to avoid spiritual paralysis. Don't you? Avoiding spiritual paralysis. So that we are following our true callings and walking a path so that we can become a complete human being. Abraham Lincoln, one of those beings of light, I think, who influenced the identity of this nation so deeply at a crucial time, said, it is the destiny of all people to be free. It's everyone's destiny to be free? Destiny. When you think about that, uh, it means walking a path, right? Walking a path towards something. Our future. So we must be free ourselves from those thoughts and fears that bind us and powerfully are trying to create a different future if we're going to create the future we really want, right? A free future. Free from harm, free from domination, free from overwork or underwork, free from hunger and not enoughness, or free from too muchness. Free to be creative, free to be who we really are, free to love who we really love. What a powerful idea, creating our own future of more and more freedom is our destiny. Long ago, the Buddha declared that the Dharma is a practice of freedom. The Dharma is a practice of freedom. In other words, freedom is available, but we've got to practice it. Abraham Lincoln's words that freedom is our destiny is similar to this Buddhist concept of the Dharma as a practice. Well, what does Dharma mean? You all maybe have studied Buddhism and you have an inkling or know what Dharma means, but it's defined as the true teaching or the ultimate purpose or the higher truth. And so it's our duty to find our personal version of the higher truth or the Dharma, to take refuge in the Dharma. To quote the Buddha, just as there is only one taste in the ocean, the taste is salt, so in Buddhism there's only one taste, the taste of freedom. So we've got to practice the Dharma or this higher truth. We've got to practice this singular awareness in the midst of all the distracting challenges. The truth that, the singular awareness that there's only one taste. In this whole universe, no matter what's happening around you, we taste love. We taste over here, love. The ocean's salty everywhere, and everywhere we taste the universe, we taste love. Mmm, delicious universe. <laughs> In Buddhism, practicing the Dharma is a discipline that leads to freedom. You may think that discipline and freedom are opposites, but they're not. It takes more discipline to live free and prosper than to follow the world's pull of fear thinking. Don't you agree? Freedom also requires courage. Gandhi, somebody who had a lot of courage, said, Freedom doesn't mean the absence of restrictions. It means possessing unshakable conviction in your choices in the face of an obstacle. Now that takes courage. The power to view all the options of the world with your eyes open and then having the freedom to see something different. The freedom to choose something different. The freedom to be free. Well, the Buddha said the way that we get there to more and more freedom is to walk the Eightfold Path. That's another sermon, you know, but that's about right seeing, right thinking, right conviction, right livelihood, all those ways of being impeccable and seeing and walking in the right way. But while Buddhism is meant to free our minds, what about our society? Can we be free thinkers in a society that has been conditioned around rigid expectations and judgments and forces of conformity? Unfortunately, way back in 300 AD, Christianity got scooped up by the empire and really got conditioned around being a force of control over people's minds and hearts rather than a, a force of freedom like I believe G Jesus really meant for it to be. We live in what is euphemistically called a free country, but are we utilizing our freedom? Are we willingly limiting ourselves? I'm going to talk to you about this. We're told that we should follow our dreams, but if we're brainwashed from childhood 
about what our life goals should be? Are we really freely thinking when we say, I want to be a success? I want to be famous. <coughs> what are the standard dreams of the program in the United States? If we just do what everyone else is doing, does that, what does that make us? Free? Freedom is the path to true happiness. And happiness usually lies in the place that the dominant society is not telling you to look. It lies in the places that we uh, don't necessarily have time to take time to look when we're caught up in the counterfeit pleasures that the world offers us. But when we get ready for freedom, we find it. We do find it. Where? Right in the seat of our soul. To paraphrase the Buddha, freedom does not lie in trying to escape, but in accepting the impermanence of the physical world and freeing yourself from attachments to material things. We need to free ourselves from what we think we want. Don't you agree? We've all been so conditioned about what we think we want. We're given all the earth to love, but we choose certain material things to care an awful lot about. Yet do we really choose what we care about, or is that choice made for us? Do most people realize how constricted they are, or is it too painful to even think about? Shakespeare said, others cannot abide the question, are you free? Simply because they aren't. So as we think here about the 4th of July called Independence Day, perhaps there's a subtle difference that we need to think about between independence and freedom. Independence means self-sufficiency, and the 13 colonies fought against the oligarchy of their day to get free and have self-sufficiency and not be dependent, be independent. We got our freedom from one tyranny, but freedom is a deep subject. How free did the colonists really get? True freedom means that we're not imprisoned internally by anyone else's words or deeds or thoughts, nor are we imprisoning others. One of the age-old problems with freedom is that people have been trained to love permission instead of freedom. To be truly independent or self-sufficient, people have to be free internally. Freedom, like peace, is an inside job. Did you ever hear the story of Dostoevsky and his writing about the Grand Inquisitor? One of my favorite stories. In the Middle Ages, they used to believe that Jesus periodically came back to the earth to see if people were ready for him yet. <laughs> so the story has it that Jesus returned and was talking in the marketplace and all the people were gathered around him and he was talking to them about freedom. You can have freedom now, he was preaching. But once again, the guards came along, grabbed him, took him to prison. The Grand Inquisitor comes into him and says with a sneer, Why are you back again? <laughs> it's a useless mission you're on. Can't you see... All the people really want is to know where their next meal is coming from, and that's what we give them. We give them bread. They don't want freedom. They want security. Why do the powers that be always seem to try to limit freedom? Do they fear that if every person is free, there would be a great pandemonium, a great chaos? Well, maybe there would be as the quantum physicists are seeing that chaos, living on the edge of chaos sometimes is where we've got to go to create what needs to happen next. It's an edge where we don't know. We're going into the unknown. We really don't know. And things get loosened up from what they have been. And we don't know what's coming. And we don't know what security might, we might have. We don't know what bread we might have or where the next meal might come from. We all face that chaos edge at death's door. The question is, can we break out of the cocoon of imposed thoughts while we're still in this body? Or is that idea too frightening to us? Wordsworth said that the problem he saw in a democracy is that people tire easily of freedom. <laughs> Franz Kafka said, sometimes it's easier to be in chains. <laughs> yeah, choices can be scary, right? The Buddha said, however, Life is constant change. Don't be still like a stone. Wake up. And Jesus said, the truth will set you free. Then you will be free indeed. 
and Antoine de, de Saint-Exupéry, who wrote the wonderful book, The Little Prince, <laughs> you know that book? He said, I know about one freedom, and that's the freedom of the mind. So when celebrating this Independence Day, let's ask ourselves, are we free? Do we truly want to be free? What heights could we aspire to? The little prince had to go off from his society to the moon or whatever planet that was to get away. Sometimes we've got to get away to shed and let go and loosen up from all the conditioning and get in touch with what we really want. What freedom, what destiny of freedom do we really want to create? What noble thing needs to come through us? Abraham Lincoln said, freedom is honorable, both in what it gives and what it preserves. In whose service is perfect freedom? Ours or society's or both? Rosa Luxemburg wrote in her treatise called Social Reform in Society, freedom is always and exclusively for the ones who think differently. Freedom is always and exclusively for the ones who think differently. Wow. Who is freedom for? The ones who think differently. Differently than what? Differently than this imposed systematic squelching of our true selves? There was a young person who wrote in her journal once trying to deal with this. You know, young people are always right trying to deal with this. Their parents imposing something on them, society imposing something on them. And this young girl wrote, Once upon a time, my mind was filled with negative talk and self-doubt. Those thoughts were so loud I couldn't hear my authentic self shining through. On a deeper level, I knew she existed, but I had forgotten how to connect with her. I believed I'd have to work at it, change myself, somehow be good enough so I could get free to be myself. I believed that the key to happiness was figuring out how to fix everything that was wrong with me. Look at that zit. Look at that hair. It's a mess. Oh, there's a lot to fix. If I fixed myself, then I could enjoy life and be that free woman I always envisioned myself to be. Little did I know that the key to this freedom wasn't fixing myself at all but realizing that the little voice coming up with all those things to fix is misdirected. My true self was already right there in front of me in the mirror, beautiful beyond words. So now, when I look in the mirror, I say, Hello, true self. I love you. In his book, The New Earth, Eckhart Tolle reminds us, we are not our thoughts but the awareness behind them. That's what the girl got in touch with. Your true self is the awareness behind your thoughts. So as we celebrate this Independence Day, I challenge you to make some space, some spaciousness between your thoughts and your true awareness. You know what I mean? Don't let just let your thoughts run over you so fast, come in, that you start thinking things that aren't really from your higher self, your true self. You have the power right now to choose from which place you're going to act. You can walk through the door of freedom right now, as Eckhart Tolle's other book so beautifully reminds us, you have the power of the now. Start looking at all the areas in your life that you can take on that power of the now. Look at where you feel stuck or hopeless or trapped, and right there, inject the spaciousness of freedom. Breathe. Let's just breathe together right now. Ah. Just get in touch right now. If you have anything, an old wound that's holding you back from this spacious place of freedom, is there somebody that you're still holding in a mindset of blame? Because Jesus said, what we set loose on earth, we set loose in heaven. And what we bind on earth, we bind in heaven. So right now, if we're going to be the Americans that are setting the destiny of the future toward freedom, we've got to keep healing our inner perspective, right? We've got to create freedom in our own minds 
as we think about ourselves and as we think about others. So right now, I want you to bring to mind somebody that you may still be feeling separate from, feeling at a distance from, somebody you haven't forgiven. Forgiveness holds us, brings us from the past into the present. It's the only time that we really have. So right in this moment, we won't go into a long ritual around it or a big forgiveness process, but just remind yourself, I've got some work to do on forgiving this person, and I'm going to do it. Because when you do this, you're seeing from the eyes of your aware, higher self. Not from the eyes of fear, but from the eyes of love. Like Thich Nhat Hanh said, remember, the opposite of love is not hate. What is it? Fear. So to be truly free, we've got to be freed up from our fears. Thich Nhat Hanh also said, our biggest fear is what? That we will become nothing when we die. If we think that we cease to exist when we die, we have not looked very deeply in the mirror at ourselves and seen who is standing there. That awake, beautiful being is eternal. Thich Nhat Hanh says, and I agree, it is possible to live every day without being afraid of what happens after we die. Through a close examination of who we are and of how we exist and how we live, we can conquer our fear to live a freer and happier life. You know, when we're faced with either our own death or the fading out of the body of someone that we love, it's, it's a real test. When my grandmother died, it was such a very difficult blow for me in my 20s. She was the person who I felt really saw me for who I really was. And after she died, I was driving in the car one day, and, and all of a sudden I felt that everywhere I looked, I saw her in the birds in the trees, in the beautiful green hills. She was there. And Thich Nhat Hanh talks about that. He says, when you practice looking deeply, you will see your true nature, where there is no birth and no death, no being and no non-being, no coming and no going, no same and no different. When you see this, you are free from fear. No fear is the ultimate joy. When you have the insight of no fear, then, then you are truly free. And like the great beings, you ride serenely. This is what Thich Nhat Hanh said. Beautiful, isn't it? When you are truly free, like the great beings, you ride serenely on the waves of birth and death. We all exist as part of this wonderful stream of life. The body is not me. I am not caught in this body. I am life without boundaries. That's what the aware self is always trying to tell you. Since beingless time, you have always been free. The wide ocean and the sky with many galaxies, the purple flowers on a thousand hillsides, are all manifest from the basis of consciousness. And guess what? So are you. You too are life without boundaries. You are free of all limitations in your aware self. Since beingless time, I have always been free. Would you say that with me in closing? Since beingless time, I have always been free. Since beingless time, I have always been free. Does that bring a smile to your face? So Thich Nhat Hanh says, when I walk through that door of freedom, smile at me, take my hand, and wave goodbye, because tomorrow we will meet again, or even before. We will always be meeting again and again at the true source, always meeting again on the myriad paths of life. O oh, death, where is thy sting? They can't get us, you guys. <laughs> There's a song by this wonderful Russian young women's group, 
They're not going to get us. They're not going to get us. <laughs> what do you say? Are you ready to walk through the door of freedom right now? Yes. Yes. Well, we're going to go into a time in a few minutes here with the Rinpoche leading us through that door of freedom, that door of self-awareness. Well, we have a song first. Well, Donna and Richard are getting ready. I hope this doesn't come across as rambling, but I think around this time of year, I, I, think, I think a lot of us do ponder the, the relationship to authority and conformity versus freedom and how they can work together. And I saw a movie last week about it, and then I was talking to a, a teenage girl about authority. And she said, you know, it's like wolves and sheep. We're either sheep or wolves. And I don't know if this is totally true, but she said that wolves have a pack leader, right, for the order of the pack. But if the pack leader does something really dumb, like, you know, walks off a cliff, the wolves don't follow that leader. But the sheep, they have a different system, right? If that sheep in the front goes off the cliff, they all follow that sheep and they go off the cliff. Is, is that correct? Is that how the animals do it? So may we be wolves. <laughs> may we find our, our proper, you know, teamwork and relationship with our government and our, our order in our lives and our freedom. So this song, Road to Freedom, you have the words. It's by uh, Mitten, I'm pretty sure. And it was just introduced to me and I thought it would be a lovely one to do here today. We would love it if you would sing with us. Oh, 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 
Well, in Bhutan, they've been on the road to freedom for a long, long time. And this week, in honor of our nation's 4th of July and in honor of the uh, Bhutanese government's constitution, I read over the Bhutan constitution. And it's really beautiful. It's got a whole section in it that's called the Declaration of the Rights of the People. And it's about that all people have the right to happiness and to right livelihood and to you know those, those things that make for happiness and that the whole government will work towards supporting that for all of their citizens. So I'm so thankful to have Rinpoche representing that country that's declared their gross national product as happiness. To be here at this fortuitous moment around our 4th of July, that means something. I think it's a really good sign. <laughs> and I'd like Becca to come up now and to uh, introduce the Rinpoche to you. Many of you know him, but some of you don't know who he is and the wonderful things that he's done. So Becca is going to introduce him. I really want to thank everyone. Three. Everyone, testing, testing. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> Magic man. Um, really want to thank everyone for coming today. Uh, getting to see Rinpoche and Norma together is so powerful this morning. We were both pulling in. We couldn't get straight in the lines with our cars. <laughs> So it was really funny, and um, yesterday uh, it was the lunch break, and we were waiting for Rinpoche, and he was a few minutes late to do a, a blessing. A few days ago, my partner talked of a man who was passing, and his family was looking for a shaman or someone to do an event and a, a blessing for his passing. So Rinpoche came a few minutes late and enjoyed a beautiful ceremony. And that night I went home, and my partner said, oh, Rinpoche was there at the lunch break, and he did a blessing for Mike uh, for his passing. So. Just know that Rinpoche is completely available to all of us. Um, you can come ask him anything, anytime. That's his life's work. He was just giving a new title uh, called a Kempo. So hundreds of people in Bhutan were there for that ceremony. Um, so we can call him Rinpoche or Kempo now. Um, I also wanted to, uh, it was really cute too, like an animal got a blessing, an animal came in and got a blessing. And um, in, the, in the back, like, Rinpoche brought this Rilbu, which has over 300 ingredients. Some of them are 250,000 years old. So people might have to walk for, Rinpoche might walk four days to a monastery in Nepal or China to get the ingredients. So it's a real huge blessing, and that's available in the back. Um, Rinpoche was talking about putting a drop of that in a person who's passing's mouth is very helpful, or even after they've passed. Um, we'd just like to thank you all. Rinpoche has a temple in Salem, Oregon, in Longmont, Colorado. He now has one in Bhutan, so we're, we're hearing about the beautiful trip that's being planned with Norma. So he's got a, a center there, so he makes it really beautiful to go to Bhutan. Don't miss that opportunity. So really keep that in mind. And I think um, the last thing is he's... He's the man who started the, he's the monk, they needed a monk to start the world peace ceremony in Bodh Gaya in India. And so Rinpoche stepped up and did that. So every time he says something, it kind of blows your mind how, how we all are so devoted on making the world a better place. And Rinpoche is just a great teacher for that. So I'll hand the Rinpoche over to you now. I think I covered everything. He's also working to replace 35 tankas that are 10 feet tall that are disintegrating in Bhutan in the sacred monastery. So, um, and he's doing a 28-day fire ceremonies, 28 fire ceremonies in a row. His teacher asked him to do 108. He's doing that from the October 1st to the 28th. So feel free to throw in a little donation uh, towards that beautiful um, healing the world and peace and compassion. So I hope I didn't miss anything. Thanks, everybody, for all your volunteers also. Is 
you, can you see me? I'm not, even I stand up, not tall enough yet. But still, I'm growing. So uh, now is good afternoon or good afternoon? So in the, this is my uh, fifth time uh, coming in Ashland. So that uh, every time when I came to the Ashland, and uh, I think like uh, Ashland is the one of the country state brother of Bhutan, and it's very uh, pretty and uh, very comfortable and very peace, and uh, the even I visit all of you here in this church and uh, other centers, other homes here. But I can hear a lot about uh, peace and happiness and the freedom. And even now today I'm listening, on the, sitting on this chair, listening very beautiful voice saying about the freedom. Very beautiful song and uh, with the beautiful music. And also Norma explained very well about the freedom and then also it's much better she explained more about it but uh, I think you might better hear from Norma better English words <laughs> my English word is I'm just sitting here on this chair and watching about you and making up myself some words but they might not you don't understand even myself, sometimes I couldn't understand what I said. <laughs> Later, I get home. <laughs> sometimes Donna said, Mitchie, you said this one, do you understand that one? I said, don't know, I don't understand what I said. <laughs> but sometimes it come, uh, naturally come from my, uh, words come out of natural from myself. So the thing is, uh, uh, the freedom, the, you're all talking about the freedom. So, whenever I go in this country, it's a freedom speech. It says uh, freedom everywhere. But uh, when I go everywhere, but the freedom, what they said, what Buddha said, and uh, what Jesus said, that uh, what right now Norma said about the freedom. I don't see much about that one uh, because the when the people, I think most people they understand. That some people they think freedom means they can do anything, and uh, more is focusing on the, if we say uh, the illegal things. We cannot do illegal things, but people say this is freedom country. We can do it, but it's not. If you think do is illegal. The, rather than legal freedom, if you do some illegal free, freedoms, that causes a lot of sufferings. So that's why we have to understand the freedom, which means uh, what we need to freedom. So what we need to freedom is, uh, I think, uh, I don't have to much explain, but uh, Norma explained, that is the most freedom we needed. And the Bhutan, gross national happiness, we are talking about the uh, peace and happiness and freedom and all the time we talk about it, gross national happiness is uh, depending on the four pillars. The four pillars is uh, the religion and the government and the, I can say, uh, financial right, uh, bank things. and. Um, also the, uh, one is the culture. So the four pillar, but uh, four pillar which we said that we talk about the four pillars, about gross national happiness. The four pillar is the, uh, I, we can say, is one of the, one major is a, uh, Religion. Religion is the ones give us a freedom. Religion is the one created the freedom. So that's why we, we have the monasteries and monks and all 
um, Bhutan. So that is the every day their work is the chanting and doing ritual, ritual ceremonies and uh, showing some uh, being generosity, being peace, being happy to others, helping to others, be, it's a showing, doing the rituals and the explanations. So every day the monks, the government gave the salary to explain to the people about the freedom and peace happiness. But this is our job. And then uh, the politicians come up and it says different way to about the freedoms. And then the people, the nature, the people, the thinking, the freedom is a different ideas. So there's a three different uh, freedoms idea. So the negative peoples, which they are thinking neg uh, freedom, it's uh, that's uh, not right freedom. So that's we we all need to be uh, pay attention on those things and the people who are thinking negative freedoms, we need to pray for them. And otherwise, they can create a lot of uh, problems and they, they can, politicians, and then they can uh, destroy our freedom. So when they destroy our freedom, then that means we destroy all the uh, human beings' freedom also. But we are the one precious human being uh, standing up, stood up, and saying that uh, we want the freedom of the, all people say freedom of the speech, freedom from the suffering. But if you don't know how to handle that uh, uh, standing up for the human beings to help for the sufferings, if we, if we can do this one, then it's natural all the session beings will be suffer all over. So that's the Buddha compassion came in this world and he helped for the all dissension beings not to suffer. He cleaned up maybe three, four, five, maybe nine, ten generation times he cleaned up to not to see any suffering in this world. But uh, but the still same the situation these days, how much we work hard to create freedom, the few negative people comes and destroy that one. So that is, we have to be very, uh, think very strongly to be, uh, keep continue helping for that, uh, to continue in freedom everywhere in this world. That is the one, uh, but I have to say many other things, but I want to make shorter. But the way of the, we are making freedom in this world is gathering together in the church. So the more I come here, this area, and uh, I saw sometimes it's more people coming in, and sometimes getting less people coming in. But uh, you have to understand that more we gather together, more we stand up and talk about freedom, it is much better benefit for the social beings. So if you coming, the blaming things area each other, rather than coming to the church, if you are more important than church, if you start going to the hiking, or if you start going to the beaches, if you start going to having a big dinner party or something like that, if you focus on that one, that freedom is only by yourself, by yourself and your family. But uh, we, if when this when we set up that Jesus come in this country, this world, and he set up talk about the he have a Bible, and Buddha have a sutra, and then we have uh, Jesus have a churches, Buddha have a temples. So that means that is the key of the freedom. So they work hard. Our, we working is tiny bit once a week. They work every minute, every time, every day, every every hour they work hard to until they establish this one. So now 
We are, it is the timing. It's our time to be uh, clean up the, all the suffering in this world. But we are trying, but uh, not only in this Ashland beautiful place, the church here with the Norma and myself and a few other people's practitioners, practitioner of the Christianity, practitioner of the Buddhism, not only you can, we few can do it that one. We all need all of your help to create this uh, strong benefit for other sentient beings. If you created the big benefit for all other sentient beings, that means we enjoy our freedom and then we are giving freedom all the sentient beings who they need that freedoms. So that's why it is very important not only we come here, we gather together and talk, but uh, we have set up sometimes days every Sunday, right? Every Sunday gathering together here, but I hope you gather like that every Sunday. And uh, we have some places, there are some houses here, and also they offer to do some uh, gathering together, to do some ceremony, to benefit for freedom. So those places also you can support, and you can make some dates gather together. So I think the I'm not saying that the best way for the freedom it's only the Buddhism from Bhutan and uh, uh, what Buddha said or not I'm not saying only that one but we need to uh, we you all of are very educated very well you can read sometimes uh, I was amazed that the Norma have uh, so many uh, I saw I thought. I saw she read so many other different books and the Bibles and the Buddhas about the Technihans and about the Buddha. She know more about it that one. So that is, uh, uh, I, was, I was really <coughs> amazed to hearing about uh, in the church about the Buddhism. It's a very surprise for me. But uh, when I listen or talk or listen other people here to talk. I don't see the difference. So freedom is a, now we, our topic is a freedom here. I think, do you all think the freedom, Buddhism freedom, Christianity freedom, and the Hindu freedom and Muslim freedom is a different or not? It's the same thing. So the same way our Buddhism, compassion and loving kindness is also same as the freedom what we all religion have it. So that's why I am trying to come to the church introducing about Buddhism, how much important to match with the Christianity. And also I go to the ashrams with the Hindu people, Swamiji's, we get together and talk about it. And uh, I don't see anything different. So that's why I think uh, most important is uh, creating the freedom more. We already have a lot of freedom, but still some negative freedoms we need to explain to that one is, we need to work hard, gather together more. So, it's, I'm not saying you guys not gathering together. If you didn't gather together, it wouldn't happen like that, all big group people together like that. That means you have worked out every weekend. So they say, still please continue gather every Sunday together and uh, listen and uh, Norma can get <coughs> ideas and uh, read some sutras and uh, Bibles and books and bring something, get to talk about the freedom and uh, compassion and loving kindness, all of you. And then we all focus on this one. If you practice on this one, and it will be, that's the one we can create more freedoms. And uh, that, uh, but uh, sounds like when you talk about freedom from the suffering, all the sentient beings, to helping for the sentient beings, sounds like a little bit difficult to tell to the people. The more freedom, it sounds like uh, 
especially Oregon and Colorado, if you talk about freedom of the marijuana, everybody happy about that one. <laughs> so I think the moment is happy, but I saw a lot of people ending up in the jail, and a lot of people are getting uh, in the hospital, and it's very, I saw so many sufferings. So those sufferings are nobody created. It's we created by all our mind. And uh, rather than coming, the listening some freedom talk and going to meditate on that one, rather than this one, more is uh, no time for that. But uh, all of you coming here, I know you have a lot of time on the own practices. That's why you are here. So most people, they don't have much time to do those things. And more spending time, as uh, I was going around on the festivals in Boulder Creek Festival and the Salem World Beat Festivals. And I've been in the, some in the steamboats and in Bhutan, so everywhere in Nepal and India. The festival uh, should be, in the Buddhist country festival should be about the special day of the Buddha, and the special day of the Shabdu, and the special day of the our king's birthday. And we, our celebration is all about that one, that celebration, to get some benefit for the sentient beings. And the evil here in the Christian country, here is also, there is a different Christianity, as like a Mormon, and the Catholic, and many different uh, Christians. And those also, when I see the celebrations like this one, the opening the door celebrations today, singing very beautiful songs and talking about freedom. So those kind of celebrations, we need to more those ones. But the more celebration, culture gathering together, it says, but only focusing celebration is on the beer. I saw that. mostly people, Truckee Lake, Big trucky leg on the hair, right hand, and the beer glass on the left hand. And then talk about nonsense and talk about so many other uh, negative things. So it doesn't help for the freedom. It, it decreases the freedom. It increases negative. So that's we and the future America, so many children are watching this one. And they think it's a culture of the United States. Going to the festival, Drink how much as you can drink, smoke how much as we can smoke, and eat how much as we can eat the turkey leg. So that is not, we didn't want that culture. That culture is, uh, we are making someone, you know, putting in the suffering. So we didn't want that one. So we want is, uh, is the same this culture. I liked that culture because beautiful day outside gathering together in a beautiful church and all talk about the peace and happiness and uh, listening very beautiful song and uh, those kind of and gather together and even you want to there is uh, so many beautiful songs there and uh, even you can you are very educated very well and from the bible you can take uh, buddhism we do this one from the buddha sutra the Kempo and Lamas, they take it out some words, good words, and make a song. They write the song. So same thing here, we have a lot of Jesus, Bible. So you can look at, read the Bibles, take it out the good words, and write some songs, and then sing on Sunday. And also, but, uh, there's a many uh, special uh, uh, saint living saint here also. So if you ask them, they have so many ideas of the good word of the songs. We don't have to use the very bad word for the songs. So that's we, the, if we increase the freedom, that uh, what I'm saying is, I'm not telling what you need to do, but uh, if we want more freedom, we have already freedom. We are, if we have more freedom, we won't be in this country in the country, very beautiful. If you are not in freedom, you will be somewhere in Afghanistan or India or somewhere in the train station without food, without clothing, and uh, eating from the trash. 
So we are not that. We are free from that one. We are in this we call pure land, United States, wisdom, uh, Western country. We have everything what we wanted. So we need to be happy about this one. So if you are not experienced living in this country, not happy, just travel with me. I will take you all over. <laughs> in the, India and Nepal. I won't take you to the uh, India, Delhi or big mall or not uh, other places. I will take you in the train stations, bus stations and the villages. I will take over those area. So then you can see which is the freedom and which is not freedom. So that's why uh, yeah, because already announced about the my project what I'm doing. This is also if you sit meditate on what I'm doing and what normal doing. If you meditate and think about it, and it is all about freedom, but it's a hard work. It is very difficult to make people believe that. But uh, who came here today? I can tell 100% of you all understand what we are doing. So I just want to be happy all of you and uh, come back again and uh, talk more about myself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so later today, if you want to be with the Rinpoche some more, at 2 o'clock, he's going to be at 1015 Ashland Street, which is near the Peace House, 1015 Ashland Street. Okay, it's great to take advantage of his being here for the few days that he is and soak it all in and meet with him as often as you can. It's beautiful what you said. Thank you so much. We're going to have our offering now. And... When we take the offering, um, give generously, because when you think about it, if you go to the movies and out to dinner, maybe you spend $25, $35, you know, so is this as valuable as that? As the Rinpoche is saying, this is a very valuable time we have together, so a portion of the offering today will go toward all the good work that Unity and Ashland is doing to be a presence here, and a portion of it will go toward all the good work that the Rinpoche is doing. So please give generously. Thank you. As we're taking the offering, we're going to have a wonderful song that you might want to sing along with, too. Yeah, this one's by Eostar. Some of you know her. And it also has the mantra, Om Gate Gate Paragate, Parasamgate Bodhisvaha within it. So um, I want you to, to sing along uh, when those repeated parts come in. Mm -hmm. 